Hey everyone, in this week's video we're going to demonstrate how you can use regular old cheese that you probably already have in your kitchen refrigerator to visualize the electromagnetic wave, albeit somewhat indirectly, that your microwave produces to cook your food on a regular basis. You see, over the last few years there have been quite a few pretty popular videos that have been circulating the interwebs that show you how you can actually measure the speed of light by using chocolate, a ruler, and your microwave oven. But if you have younger learners, like my kids who are 10 and 6, calculating the speed of light, well, we're not quite there yet, and we need to do the basics first but we will be doing that video down the road so be sure and subscribe because that video is definitely gonna be pretty dope I know I'm too old to say the word dope anymore regularly but I just thought it would for concept purposes and really as an introduction I thought it would be more interesting and neat for my kids to show them what an actual light wave and other electromagnetic waves like x-rays microwaves and radio waves actually look like and to do that you're going to need some pretty complex scientific equipment you're gonna need some cheese and you're gonna need a slinky if you're interested in doing this at home, it's actually a little harder than you might think to go find a slinky at your local Walmart. So I bought mine off Amazon, and if you want to do something similar, you can hit the link in the description below. The electromagnetic spectrum is a term that describes all light that exists, of which we can only see a small amount of it with our eyes in the forms of the colors of the rainbow, like this rainbow we saw in the parking lot the other day. Just like there are sounds that we can't hear that other animals can, there is way more light all around us that exists that we cannot visualize than we actually can. Take for example this remote. We can't see the infrared light coming out from the end of it, but our TV sensors can certainly detect it and do what the remote tells it to do. All forms of light travel through space in waves, much like waves in the ocean, and it's the characteristics of these waves that give it its properties. Think about these two shoes here. This is a big shoe, a heavy shoe, a thick shoe. It's great for walking around in the woods in. This is a light shoe, an airy shoe, perfect for walking around in the beach. They all have different characteristics, different properties, but at the end of the day, they're still both shoes. Hey daddy. Yeah? Have you seen my sandals? Just as shoes come in all shapes and sizes, so does light and all the electromagnetic waves that are all around us all the time. Another example would be electromagnetic radio waves. Just like the TV remote and the infrared light that we can't see, we can't see the radio waves, but we know they're there because they're hitting our antenna and bringing us our favorite tunes that we like to jam out to all the time. Miley Cyrus, it's for the kids. They enjoy it. So one more time, just as all these shoes look different, they have different properties, they're different colors, but in the end of the day, they're still all shoes. The different forms of electromagnetic radiation all have different properties, some have different colors that we can see, but at the end of the day, they're all forms of electromagnetic waves. So to start this series off, I thought it would be a good idea to show exactly what those properties of light are and what electromagnetic light waves actually look like. And that is why we're going to need the slinky. <laughs> This is what makes the slinky such an excellent toy for this kind of exercise. Because to be able to understand what an electromagnetic wave looks like, especially the ones that are being produced by our microwave, we need to understand the anatomy of the wave. And that's what makes the slinky so great. It creates a near perfect wave. And for the introductory purposes of this video, we're going to learn four terms. The crest, the trough, the antinode, and the node. And we're going to discuss the antinodes and the nodes in a few minutes. Just like an ocean wave, the uppermost part of an electromagnetic wave is called the crest. The lowermost part is called the trough. And you can measure the length of the wave by using these terms. The distance between one crest and another crest, or one trough and another trough, is called the wavelength. And the number of waves that pass any given point in one second is called its frequency. And we will discuss more about wavelength and frequency in upcoming videos. Enough talking, at this point it's time to go to the kitchen and do the demonstration. We did this experiment a few different ways. The first time we did it we used prepackaged shredded cheese, and it worked out okay. The second time we did it, we did sliced cheese and it was way better. So if you're going to do this, if you're going to draw your own electromagnetic wave, I recommend you use sliced cheese. All you have to do is take a microwave safe plate. The larger the plate, the better, and a paper plate works best. And the hardest part about this step, which is the only step, is spreading your cheese out on the plate and then putting it in the microwave and cooking it. One super important step not to be forgotten is if your microwave has a turntable off button, be sure and press it. And if it doesn't give you the ability to turn the turntable off on the inside, just open up your door and take out the glass tray and it'll work just as well. 
but for the purposes of this demonstration, you can't have the food rotating on the inside while it's cooking. All you need to do is cook your cheese on the inside of the microwave for about 10 or 20 seconds, depending on the power of your microwave. And while the cheese is cooking, let's talk about what a node and an antinode is, because that's important for this demonstration. A node is part of the electromagnetic wave that has minimal amplitude, or perhaps easier to understand, it's the part of the wave that doesn't move that much. If you look at the wave here, and look at the arrows, you can see the arrows are pointing to part of the wave that essentially is not moving. And that's important because that part of the electromagnetic wave does not have much energy. Now conversely, the antinode is the part of the wave that has maximum amplitude, or the part that moves the most. And as you might expect, the antinodes are part of the electromagnetic wave that have the most energy. And it's that crucial nugget of knowledge that's going to help us with this final step of the demonstration. When you take your cheese out of the microwave, you'll notice only certain areas have begun to melt. Those areas correspond to the part of the wave that has the most energy. And as we now know, that's the antinode. When you look at your cheese and the parts that are melted, you're basically looking at the antinodes of the electromagnetic microwave. And because of what we know now, the antinodes correspond to the most energetic part of the microwave and two adjacent areas of melting on your cheese are essentially going to correspond to one crest and the trough that comes next to it. So with that piece of information if you take a toothpick or something narrow knowing what we know now with the slinky showing us how wavelengths actually appear and we know where the crest and the trough of the electromagnetic microwave is on the microwave because it basically left its fingerprint on our cheese we can pretty much actually trace what the microwave is going to look like and that's what we've done here with our cheese as you can see. Obviously at this point we're in the elementary stages and we're not getting into the amplitude and the frequency of the wave, those will come later, but this actually does give a pretty accurate representation of the wavelength of the electromagnetic microwave imprinted into the cheese. And one interesting fact, look how big the wavelength is, you can actually measure it in inches. It is far bigger than the tiny holes that are in the screen shield on the front door of the microwave. It is the size of the electromagnetic microwave itself that keeps it from being able to escape that front door through those small holes. Visible light waves, however, are far smaller than microwaves and can easily penetrate those holes and that is why you're able to see in, see your food being warmed up, and not be harmed by the microwaves that are inside actually doing the warming up. So this was a really fun demonstration. It's actually pretty quick. It only takes the amount of time of laying some cheese out and warming it up for 20 seconds. It's one way for them to appreciate that they are constantly bombarded by electromagnetic waves and radiation all the time and they just can't see it. How many times have you had the conversation with your kids just because you can't see wind, it doesn't mean it's not there and you talk about being able to see the effects of the blowing leaves. It's the exact same thing. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there, and this is a great demonstration that illustrates that. The worksheet that goes along with this video will be posted to our website pretty soon. We will go more in depth into the electromagnetic spectrum in our videos in the future, so if you're interested in topics like this, be sure and subscribe. I hope you have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you next week.